Hello students, welcome to the EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Rashmi Sharma, Head of the Department OBNHR, Lal Bahadur Shastri Institute of Management, Delhi. Today we will learn the module Assessment Center. This module is from the paper Contemporary Issues in HRM and Future Trends. The learning outcome of this module are history of assessment centers, some typical assessment tasks, non-exercise material, principles of assessment centers, designing an assessment center, development centers, assessment centers, reservist development centers and the assessment process. We would also include some examples of assessment centers. After completing this module, the students will be able to understand the concept of assessment centers, understand the designing of assessment centers and learn the assessment process. An assessment center is treated as an extended period of interviews, assessment exercises and tasks which are organized and held by recruiters for small group of candidates. The recruiters use assessment centers to identify how candidates perform in different situations, particularly in group situations, which are often modeled on real work based scenarios. The term assessment center is used because employers usually conduct these extended assessments in a single center, which may be an office of the employer or at a third party venue such as a hotel or function room. It lasts for one day to as long as three days and it is certainly an, a very very expensive process. The employees are asked to perform a set of tasks which are designed to ascertain their ability to perform those aspects of the job that they are seeking. It is usually focused on internal promotions. Now there are four main areas where the evaluation is done, organizing, planning, decision making and leadership. The assessment center is one of the most complex method of evaluating an employee behavior. It includes a combination of different methods for identifying the competencies and characteristics of an individual. The independent assessors are given an objective assessment of managerial and social skills of the individual. The assessments are devised in the form of exercises that the employee or candidates can do while several assessors observe them and evaluate their specific behaviors. The group of participants are then guided by moderators who simultaneously observe the expressed competencies. The assessment centers provide us an individual specific feedback that would ultimately help the candidate to assess their strengths and weaknesses. This leads to planning an individual's career path which focuses on the employee's core competencies and also allows them to frame an individual training and development plan to overcome the weakness or their performance gaps if at all any. This also enables employees to make a greater use of planning the tools, use technology in a better manner and strengthen the people management skills, become much more agile and proactive. It also helps the organization to increase their goal setting, build a stronger team, increase the sensitivity and recognize the employers and employees contribution in a better manner. Let's understand the history of assessment centers. Do you know that the German army was the first one to introduce the assessment procedures for choosing its officers in the 1930s under the leadership of Dr. Max who was a psychologist and was appointed as the head of the army laboratory. The army laboratory introduced the leadership test British government and a selection assessment board was created using its own testing methods based on the methods and exercises of Dr. Max. American intelligence also recognized the benefits of such methods that were adopted 
and it further enriched it by adding psychological test assessment criteria. The assessment centers were first created in World War II and are still commonly used in military recruitment today, the primary purpose is to select the officer. AT&T was the first private company to create a building for recruitment and promotion of staff in the 1950s which was called the assessment center and was influential on subsequent selection methods in other businesses. Let's understand what are the different kinds of assessment tasks. Written exercises, which is actually a simulation of written work that might come across the target level job holder. In basket exercises are versatile exercises wherein participants have to solve the problem and respond to messages etc that can normally be found in a manager's in-basket. A leaderless group discussion can also be conducted wherein the candidates are given a problem and are expected to solve it without any one person designated as a leader. Role plays helps to identify people who can play out job related situations which are focusing more on solving the problem given to them. In video vignettes, instead of role plays, we can use video vignettes. These present participants with a taped lead up to the situation with oral responses. Other assessment tasks include presentation, wherein candidates are asked to make and present the previously given topics, group exercises wherein the groups that should have the different types of groups must diverse in its profile to see which group has a better working ability of the candidate. Fact finding exercise wherein the candidates are asked to reach a decision with only partial knowledge. There are instances where group discussions are also initiated on a common topic. Simulations are activities that are performed on a situation. The evaluation is done on the basis of responses to the situation simulating that particular task. Analytical exercises are nothing but written exercises wherein candidates are required to complete a piece of analytical work. Interactive exercises are written components of an interaction. Let's understand the different categories of exercises. There are two types of exercises that we are discussing in this slide. Tailor made exercise. These exercises are specifically designed for a particular organization with the organizational requirements being taken into consideration. The other type is off the shelf exercise, which is best suited exercise for the requirements they may be chosen. They are readily and cheaply available, but are not specifically designed with the organization's competencies in mind. The other categories of exercises include customized exercises and integrated exercises. The customized exercises lie in the middle of the shelf exercise and tailor made exercise. Herein, a basic exercise is taken and customized for the organizational requirements. The fourth type is integrated exercise wherein assessment centers can have much more impact if the exercises are bundled together in an integrated center. Let's have a look at the non-exercise material. Some examples of non-exercise material are interviews, which is an information that is spread across several dimensions that can be gained to form an interview. The situational questions or pressure questions are asked. The interview should be conducted systematically. Self-evaluation. 
participants may undergo self-evaluation before and after the assessment center. Such assessments get the candidates to reflect in terms of performance and competency. Peer assessment should be conducted before the assessment center and can be used as a basis to see how the participants feel about each other. Tests, psychometric tests, personality test, attitude measures, ability test, etc. can be mixed with the exercises depending upon the requirements of the assessment. The projective techniques like thematic perception test, incomplete sentences, etc. can be a valuable source of information when targeted at the organizational requirements. Now let's understand the principles of assessment center. Confidentiality of the design and structure of the assessment center is paramount. The score should be shared but in a one-on-one -on -one manner so that confidentiality prevails. The planning and preparation should be proper and adequate in order to avoid any situation that can affect the assessment environment and the environment should also be interruption free. Only the data that has been generated in the assessment center should be used for the assessment and all the past facts and figures should not be brought into the picture. The assessment instruments that elicit behavioral samples from predetermined domains are developed in order to establish job relatedness of the assessment. The observers should be provided with the mean to make specific judgments regarding the candidate's performance in relation to the job skill requirement for the targeted job. When we have to design an assessment center, there are few objectives that we have to keep in mind. The objectives and relevance in context to assessment and the business and role requirement should be taken into consideration. The broad framework of the industry situation and business tactics should also be taken into account. The observers should be industry experts and trained behavioral scientists and other human resource experts. There should be multiple observers and they should be rotated on a regular basis in order to eliminate any kind of bias that might culminate. The candidate groups should regularly be shuffled in order to remove the existing interpersonal dynamics. There should be multiple methods of evaluating the different competencies being evaluated. There should also be some methods to measure more than one competency. That is, there should be tools for groups and individual assessment. The tools that are used for assessment should be empirically validated and that's the most important thing. Let's understand the basic difference between an assessment center and a development center. An assessment center is always set up primarily for a selection, recruitment and promotion, but a development center is set to reflect the developmental objectives retaining to training needs. An assessment center is used to evaluate the capabilities against the standard criteria, whereas a development center is used to identify the potential of the training needs. While an assessment center, it is a selection process and evaluation and assessment are prioritized. In development center, a training program and evaluation is underplayed. Assessment center can last for several days and it's relatively less expensive while development center lasts longer and is very, very expensive. In an assessment center, there are no developmental activities. But in a development center, feedback and development occur during the conclusion of a development center. We have understood the assessment process. Now let's have a look at some of the common examples of an assessment process. We all have heard of PwC. The PwC assessment center includes numerical, verbal, inductive reasoning tests, and an individual written exercise followed by a group exercise and role plays. 
The graduate consulting strategy and economic roles also have a case study exercise and a presentation exercise. At the leading KPMG company, their assessment center has an e tray exercise that is based on fictional emails which are followed by a written exercise that is based on some information. There is also a group exercise which is concluded by the group presenting their findings. There is a 10 minute individual presentation exercise to a partner who asks you, as in if you are the assessor, a question. There is also the classic partner interview. Now let's have a look at what is being followed at Ernst & Young. The Ernst & Young has an assessment center which involves a partner interview, a group discussion exercise which is followed by a case study exercise where you can communicate your proposal in a brief report or presentation. The Rolls-Royce company also has a one-day assessment center which includes supervised psychometric tests, wherein a case study exercise is given and the technical interviews with managers are done to assess the graduate's technical knowledge. So as to conclude, an assessment center is a selection process through which the employees are evaluated to determine their appropriateness for specific types of employment, especially management or military command. The employees are asked to perform a set of tasks designed to ascertain their ability to perform the aspects of the job that they are seeking. It is usually focused on the internal promotions. The observers have to evaluate the performance on the different tasks and draw inferences about the skills and abilities of the participants. The observers are usually trained managers from within the company. The performance is rated on a predefined scale for each job related dimension. The assessment centers generally last for several days and are very very expensive to administer. But even they must be expensive, these centers are very very effective to predict job performance and estimate the key leadership capabilities. The assessment centers are financially a very valid option when it comes to assessing the cost of poor hiring and promotion decisions are higher. Most companies have their own in-house assessment center while the others send their employees to outside assessment center. Selecting people based on their capability to do the necessary task has long been an established norm in the selection of military personnel. The German army was the first one to introduce assessment procedures for choosing its officer in the 1930s under the leadership of Dr. Max Simeonit, who was a psychologist. He was appointed as the head of the army laboratory. These assessment tasks included written exercises, simulation in basket exercises, leaderless group discussion, role plays, presentations, analytical exercises, interactive exercises and video vignettes. Although exercises are the core of the assessment center, there are other materials that can be used for the assessment. While designing an assessment center, the objectives and relevance in context of business and role requirements should be taken into consideration. The broad framework of industry situation and business tactics should be taken into account. The observers should be industry experts, trained behavioral scientists and other human resource experts. There should be multiple observers and they should be rotated on a regular basis in order to avoid any kind of bias. The candidate groups should regularly be shuffled in order to remove the existing interpersonal dynamics. There should be multiple methods of evaluating the different competencies being evaluated. There should also be some methods to measure more than one competency, some tools for group and individual assessment. The tools used for assessment should be empirically validated. A development center, we learned, is a day or number of days when the participants are actively involved in the assessment of their own or others' behavior as part of their professional development. We also understood the basic difference between assessment centers and development centers. 
The process of assessment was also mentioned and examples were given in this module. Thank you.